im Klangraum Krems Minoritenkirche. Willkommen bei den Europäischen Literaturtagen 2022. Der erste der beiden Worte und Töne Abende gilt dem rumänischen Schriftsteller Mircea Cartarescu. Worte und Töne verspricht eine symbiotische Erfahrung aus Literatur, Schauspielkunst und Musik. Ich bedanke mich bei Albert Hosp, der unter uns ist, und dem Festival Glatt und Verkehrt für die Kooperation. Wir beide gemeinsam programmieren diese Veranstaltung und gestalten sie. Ich darf Ihnen noch Veronika Trubel vorstellen. Sie wird sie durch den Abend geleiten. Veronika Trubel ist Autorin, Journalistin und Leiterin der Eliup Europäischen Jugendbegegnungen die eigentlich aus den europäischen Literaturtagen heraus entstanden sind, die eng mit uns kooperieren, europäische Literatur Jugendlichen aus Niederösterreich und Wien näher bringen. Und die möchte ich auch noch dazu erwähnen, vom Europäischen Parlament 2021 mit dem Europäischen Bürgerpreis ausgezeichnet wurden. Bitte, Veronika für deine Moderation. Ja, vielen Dank. Einen wunderschönen Abend. Ich freue mich wirklich sehr, Sie durch den Abend zu begleiten. Sie hören heute außergewöhnliche Literatur, die von einer außergewöhnlichen Schauspielerin vorgetragen wird. Dazu gibt es Musik in einer Formation, die in dieser Formation so noch nie zusammengespielt hat. Uh, Im literarischen Mittelpunkt steht Mirka Catarescu, der gilt als wichtigster rumänischer Schriftsteller und uh, Nobelpreiskandidat. Auf Deutsch lesen wird Burgschauspielerin Dorothee Hartinger. Ich möchte nun auch die Musik vorstellen, bevor wir zum Einstieg gleich ein Musikstück hören. Franziska Hartz am Akkordeon. Sie widmet sich intensiv der World Music und ist seit 2015 Programmkuratorin der Internationalen Akkordeon Festivals in Wien. Sascha Scheschenko am Akkordeon, er hat ein breites musikalisches Spektrum an Genres, von der Klassik über die Volksmusik bis hin zu Jazz und Elektronik. Außerdem hat er eine Affinität zum Sprechtheater und hat Engagements am Burgtheater, an der Volksoper und am Theater an der Wien, am Theater, sorry, Theater an der Josefstadt in Wien. Richie Winkler ist Komponist und Arrangeur, er spielt Saxophon und Klarinette und interpretiert unter anderem Jazz in einer ganz neuen Form. Herzlich willkommen an Sie alle drei und wir freuen uns, Sie jetzt zu hören. Bitte.
Thank you. 
So, vielen Dank. Was erwartet uns heute Abend? Zunächst ein Gespräch mit unserem Gast Mircea Caterescu, zu dem ich gleich komme. Danach wird er für uns eine Stelle aus seinem Buch Melancholia ein Stück auf Rumänisch vorlesen. Dies, also danach wird mit derselben Stelle beginnend auf Deutsch Dorothy Hartinger lesen und wir hören dann abwechselnd Musik und Passagen aus dem Buch. Ja, ein herzliches Willkommen an Sie. Wir freuen uns sehr, die Freude ist enorm, dass Sie bei uns sind, bei den Europäischen Literaturtagen. Bevor wir miteinander reden, möchte ich Sie ein bisschen dem Publikum vorstellen, damit Sie auch Sie besser verorten können. Mirza Catarescu wurde 1956 in Bukarest in Rumänien geboren. Er ist dort aufgewachsen und lebt auch in, einer, in seiner Heimatstadt, obwohl er unendlich viel heißt natürlich. Er hat auch viel Zeit im Ausland verbracht, darunter auch in Wien und in Florenz. Für sein Werk hat er viele internationale Preise bekommen. Nächste Woche bekommt er einen richtig großen in Mexiko, den Vielpreis für Literatur in romanischen Ländern, zu dem wir wirklich herzlich gratulieren. Eine einzigartige Auszeichnung. Hier bei uns möchte ich auf die deutschsprachigen Auszeichnungen hervorheben. Da wäre der Leipziger Buchpreis für europäische Verständigung, der Thomas Mann Preis und der österreichische Staatspreis für europäische Literatur. Vom Schreiben her kommt er... Ja, da darf man applaudieren. Genau. <lacht> genau. Der wichtigste rumänische Autor, so kann man sagen, ja, genau. Das Buch, aus dem wir heute hören, heißt Melancholia. Es ist 2019 auf Rumänisch und jetzt 2022 auf Deutsch erschienen. Und ich möchte auch erwähnen, dass wir sein allerneuestes Buch auch hier haben. Äh, Theodorus, das ist allerdings noch nicht auf Deutsch erschienen, auch noch nicht in einer anderen Sprache als Rumänisch, aber wir haben es schon da. Ähm, zurück zu Melancholia. Ähm, es ist nicht das erste Buch, ähm, indem sie sich mit der Verlorenheit und zugleich der überreichen äh, Fantasie und Innenwelt von Kindern beschäftigen, übersetzt übrigens auf Deutsch von Ernest Wichner. Ähm, es sind Erzählungen, äh, magische Kinder- und Jugendinnenwelten, da häuten sich Menschen wie Schlangen, es gibt Füchse in der Wohnung und ganz wesentlich geht es immer wieder um Erfahrungen von Einsamkeit, Trennung und Liebe. Herr Cartaresco ist für seine Romane berühmt geworden, er ist aber ein Dichter in Wahrheit. Und ich sage absichtlich nicht Autor oder Schriftsteller, weil die deutsche Sprache hier ein richtig gutes Wort dafür hat, was er tut, nämlich er verdichtet. Er macht Sprache Dichter, er verfügt mit seiner unglaublichen Gedankenwelt, er hat einen unglaublichen Reichtum an Bildern, an Symbolen. Das geht bis in die mikroskopisch feinsten Details. Im Ergebnis haben seine Bücher eine schillernde Kraft, etwas Unglaubliches, zieht einen richtig hinein, eine atemberaubende Denkwelt, in die man ihm folgt, wenn man ihn liest. Dinge schweben, Gänge tun sich auf, wo man sie nicht erwartet. Es ist wirklich eine faszinierende Reise, auf die sie uns mitnehmen. Und äh, in dem Zusammenhang meine erste Frage, Sie haben zweifellos eine einzigartige Bilderwelt in sich und zwar offenbar, wie man nicht nur in Mel Melancholie, sondern auch in früheren Werken schon sieht, schon seit Ihrer Kindheit. Und meine Frage wäre, erinnern Sie sich an einen Moment in Ihrer Kindheit, wo Sie bemerkt haben, ich denke anders als die anderen, ich habe da andere Bilder als die? Um, thank you so much uh, for uh, your uh, very nice question. Uh, uh, I will answer it with pleasure, but first uh, I would like to say good evening to all of you. Uh, I feel very flattered to see that the room is full um, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, you won't regret uh, for coming uh, here in such a, in such a, a bad weather at least the church is uh, warm and uh, our hearts are warm and I think uh, we will uh, um, feel good uh, together uh, in this uh, magic and wonderful evening in this magic place. Uh, I love this church. I love uh, the good vibes that uh, I can feel uh, since uh, when I'm here. Um, I have to thank the organizers for having invited me. It's a, it's a great honor for me to be here in Krems. 
um, I, ha I have to congratulate you for the so beautiful town you have. Um, my wife and I uh, walked around a bit uh, in the center this morning, and we were absolutely fascinated with the beautiful landscapes of your uh, town, with uh, the Danube, with um, the um, autumn trees, the yellow trees, uh, and with uh, um, this cloudy, melancholic weather that we met uh, in, in the center. <laughs> Um, I don't know uh, how Krems is in the spring or in the summer, but in the autumn is wonderful. <laughs> uh, I thank uh, the two ladies uh, uh, who share uh, the, um, the stage with me this evening, and I, I thank them so much uh, uh, for uh, being so kind to, to be here and to help us in this event. And um, I have to say that in this room there are many um, famous people. Uh, I will only um, uh, um, talk about one of them, a very dear friend of mine, uh, my publisher for, from Vienna, Herbert Orlinger, who actually published uh, um, the book we are talking about uh, this evening um, uh, with his uh, well-known publishing house, uh, Paul Scholnei. Uh, I greet uh, him uh, this evening and I'm very, very happy that he is here. Um, about uh, your question, but, but first I have to thank you uh, uh, for, for the beautiful and undeserved uh, words that uh, you said about my, my very humble uh, work. Uh, well, uh, if I remember well, I was not different as a child from the other children. Um, at the back of the block of apartments uh, where I lived with my parents, we were all the same. I think the all the children are, are the same, actually. Um, they are all um, uh, very uh, nice, very strange, very um, uh, beautiful. Uh, and I was, I had nothing, uh, nothing, uh, um, uh, nothing special uh, by that time. And not, uh, I would say, I would add uh, for my whole life. I'm a very regular person <laughs> and I'm proud of it. Uh, um, well, uh, um, if I remember well, by that time uh, I had a very big pleasure, which followed me my whole life, the pleasure of reading. But I was not special even uh, by this uh, uh, feature, because by that time the children used to read. Uh, they did not have uh, um, tablets, they did not have uh, um, iPhones, uh, they had instead something much more beautiful in my opinion, something much more uh, um, uh, fantastic in a way, the books. The book is still, in my opinion, the most wonderful instrument of reading that the people invented. And um, I had a sort of a fetish of books from my very young uh, um, uh, years, from, I was, from when I was uh, five or six, when I learned to, to read, um, and I, I, I pronounce this word fetish because actually uh, I did not grow in a book, in a, in a world of books. My parents were very simple uh, persons. Uh, they came to, from the countryside and they were put in factories in a program of uh, forced industrial, in, industrialization because I lived in a, in a dictatorship actually, and they did not have the habit to read books or to buy books, and they did not have money to buy books. So the books were a, a luxury pro product by mm -hmm. that time in my country. But nevertheless, whenever I could, I entered a library, I entered a bookstore, and I was looking with big and round eyes to the uh, shop windows full of books, 
like uh, those little children from Andersen, from the Andersen fairy tales who looked uh, in, uh, in uh, the windows uh, of the um, toy, toy uh, stores um, and they could never have a toy. Uh, so I, uh, I did my best to buy books. Since when I was seven or eight, uh, the, the, my, my parents sent me uh, to school uh, and gave me very little money to buy a sandwich each day. And I saved those money to buy books. Or um, not only books, but uh, these kind of booklets, uh, pulp, pulp uh, booklets uh, of science fiction, of adventures, that uh, were to be found at uh, the paper uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, stores. And I bought maybe one in a month or two in a month, and I really loved them. I loved them. Um, in a way like the, the, the girls love their toys, their uh, uh, dolls. Mm -hmm. uh, I had, at, at a certain moment, I had only about 10 books at home. All of them were bought by me, and I knew them by heart, uh, even before lear having learned to, uh, to read. I, I loved the, the object, uh, which we call book. Mm -hmm. I loved to browse through them. I loved to, I loved to uh, see the pictures in them. Mm -hmm. I was so happy uh, for each and every book that I had. And now I remember that they were very, very disparate books. Uh, they were not uh, necessarily books of literature. Mm -hmm. One of them, for example, was a biography of Thomas Alva Edison. Uh, another one was um, um, a book of travels in Antarctica. Another one was about the life of the Polynesians. So uh, I bought books uh, um, by watching uh, the, 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 the drawings on their cover. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, with my childish mind, uh, th those ones attract, attracted me more. And maybe they were cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so um, if Hölderlin said in a, in a famous uh, poem, that uh, in his childhood he felt uh, different from the other children mm -hmm. and he sometimes he heard a god talking to him uh, i should confess that i i never heard a god talking to me <laughs> uh, and uh, i was not different i was like all the other children but i love to read mm -hmm. uh, reading is even now even today is my greatest pleasure mm -hmm. um, i imagine myself reading all the time in all each and every period even my very first uh, memory of my life shows myself in the lap of my mother and my mother was keeping a big book of poems very beautifully illustrated in front of us and she was reading uh, uh, to me from from that book so uh, um, i think uh, that this is the only thing that made, the, made me a little bit uh, stranger among my, uh, my uh, fellow uh, children. Uh, the fact that I preferred to read instead of playing football, is, instead of uh, playing uh, games with, uh, with, uh, with the children and so on. Da würde ich gerne noch eine Frage nachsetzen dazu. Gab es in Ihrem Umfeld jemanden in der Familie oder im Bekanntenkreis, der gelesen hat? Oder waren Sie tatsächlich der Einzige, der sich, dem sich die Bücher eröffnet haben? Um, please repeat the question for... Okay, so were you the only person in the family or among friends yes, who yes, read? Yes, uh, Or were there maybe bigger relatives? Yes, I, I'm sorry, it was an interruption. Uh, okay, okay. Here. Um, um, I remember um, when, uh, because I um, uh, got ill and uh, I had at, at around 10, uh, 10 uh, um, years old, uh, I had tuberculosis and I had to be put in an institution um, which was uh, not uh, bad because it was in the middle of a, a huge 
uh, uh, forest. It was a hospital in the middle of a huge forest, and we were playing uh, all the time uh, in the forest. It was actually quite a happy part uh, mm -hmm. of my childhood, um, uh, um, although I was ill. Uh, by that time, I got friends with um, another child who um, was the first to suggest me that we should not only read, but write, but start to write. So I'm grateful uh, till now uh, to that friend of mine, uh, because maybe if I didn't uh, meet him uh, uh, in that, uh, in that uh, special occasion of my life, maybe now I would have been, um, I don't know, a carpenter or a mason, or I don't know what, uh, what other job. Uh, he convinced me uh, that we should write a novel together, like Ilf and Petrov, for example, uh, or like uh, other pairs uh, of, uh, of writers. And we started to write. We wrote, uh, of course, we were nine. We wrote a, a novel which uh, had nine pages, was oh. nine pages <laughs> long, about uh, some uh, cowboys who traveled around the world. So we combined uh, something from Jules, Jules Verne and something from the Far West uh, stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember, uh, like today, uh, something very nice uh, um, uh, which happened. So um, starting to write fiction, um, I understood that I could make dialogues. There was no problem. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, and I, I could uh, um, retell some stories, but what, what I couldn't do was description. I couldn't describe things. Uh, so at a certain moment uh, in my novel, uh, the, the two cowboys, Jack and Jim, if I remember well, went into a forest. And in the forest, they discovered a cabin, an old wooden cabin and I wrote the cabin looked like that and then the point of my pen raised and I couldn't put it on the page anymore because I couldn't describe the cabin I didn't know where to start starting from the roof or starting from the the, the windows the the doors I, I didn't know how to do it and do you know what I did? I draw it. I draw it. The, the cabin looked like that. And it was the drawing of a cabin. Uh, so this is, this is what I remembered so well. And then, uh, because, maybe because of that, I tried to make progresses in this direction. Uh, and uh, now uh, many critics uh, say that I'm a descriptive uh, writer. So I learned something <laughs> from that, that, that old shameful experience <laughs> of my first, uh, my first novel uh, written. Ja, danke schön. Ähm, mir geht es so, dass ich, also ich sehe Bilder tatsächlich, wenn ich, wenn ich Ihre Bücher lese und ich nehme an, es geht vielen anderen auch so. Es ist fast wie filmhaft. Ja? Ja. Äh, ich möchte zum Buch Melancholia zurückkehren. Es geht da um Kinder, die haltlos sind und deren magische Innenwelten sie eröffnen. Da ist ein Fünfjähriger zum Beispiel, der jahrelang auf seine Mutter wartet, die beim Einkaufen verschwunden ist. Oder ein Achtjähriger, der glaubt, dass seine Schwester und er von bösen Füchsen bedroht werden. Und er geht dann tatsächlich auf eine Reise, um, diese, um diesen Fuchsbau äh, zu suchen in seinem Gedanken. Oder Ivan, ein Gymnasiast, der in einer Welt lebt, wo Menschen sich häuten wo heute im Kleiderschrank hängen und wo man äh, tatsächlich in eine fremde Haut schlüpfen kann und von beiden Seiten der Lieder, wie es heißt, äh, quasi äh, in die Welt schauen kann. Ähm, was verbindet denn alle diese Kinder aus Ihrer Sicht? Um, uh, talking about uh, Melancholia, um, one of my latest uh, novels, or a collection of, of, of short stories, but I uh, still think it's a novel because it's, all, all the stories are, connecting, are connected uh, 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 to each other. Um, 
talking about it, uh, I would say that it's a special book in my uh, in my uh, um, uh, work because it's an implosive book and not an explosive one. Mm -hmm. uh, many of my books, uh, and now I, I talk about my novels, uh, like uh, Solenoid or Blinding, uh, are explosive books. So uh, they uh, they uh, um, show their power outside um, in an objective way. Melancholia is purely subjective. It's purely su subjective. It's discrete. It's uh, concentrated. It's uh, more close to the um, basis of our uh, souls, of our feelings, of our beings. Uh, it's a, um, I would, I, I would call it a metaphysical book, mm -hmm. uh, not um, because it's philosophic, because it isn't. It isn't too philosophic. Anyone could read it, uh, but um, in uh, that respect, uh, in which uh, um, a painting like Giorgio de Chirico mm -hmm. is called metaphysical, so it's about silence, it's about solitude, it's about melancholy. Uh, Giorgio de Chirico has a, a famous painting called um, The Melancholy and Solitude of a Street. And uh, in a way, because I was always fascinated with his painting, I tried to reconstruct, to rebuild that frozen atmosphere, that uh, um, uh, uh, collection of places uh, with nobody in 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 them, um, emptiness, uh, um, solitude, and uh, and uh, a sense of loss characterize uh, most of the stories in this uh, in this book. I love this book very much. I, I I don't say that I love all my books, but this one I love. Uh, and uh, uh, there's another thing that I could say. It's that, uh, stylistically speaking, uh, maybe Melancholia is my best book ever. Uh, only stylistically speaking, um, in the way that uh, Nabokov, st stylistically speaking, is better than most of the writers, most of the other writers. Of course, he's not so big, so great like Dostoevsky, for example. Mm -hmm. But but from the point of view of his um, uh, craftsmanship of, of his style, he is the best. Uh, so uh, I'm pleased with this book, which I cannot say about all, all the other books of mine. And uh, uh, I think they, they came from, from a zone of my heart, uh, which is pure and true. Uh, each and every uh, stories of uh, the five stories uh, that compose uh, uh, Melancholia, is really um, lived, is lived by me, has been lived by me. It's nothing is nothing is artificial. Each one of them start from a real traumatic uh, memory. Uh, for example, the first one that we were talking about, it's about a, a child who is five years old and who uh, lives with his uh, parents in, a, in an apartment. And uh, at a certain moment, his mother goes out shopping um, to buy food, to buy food for, for the family, and she never returns. So uh, um, this, uh, this um, situation came from a very strong memory that I really had. Uh, um, one day, when, when I was five or six, my mother left but because uh, the, the food was very scarce in my country by that time, and the people stayed in line for hours mm -hmm. to, to buy, uh, um, uh, buy meat and uh, vegetables and other things that uh, were very scarce, uh, because of that, she didn't come in an hour or in two hours as it was uh, the habit she had. She came after five hours. And uh, in all this time, I was alone at home. And I thought that my mother, my mother will never, 
will never come, will never come back. And you can imagine how terrorized I was uh, by feeling myself alone in the world. Because uh, uh, in those years, as you all know, uh, the only way that we survive is keeping our mother by hand. So our mother sh uh, has to be there. Uh, otherwise, we are alone in the whole universe. So I felt uh, that I had that, uh, that feeling deep in my heart. And after 60 years, I remembered it and I wrote this, uh, this uh, story. Uh, so um, the story exaggerates uh, a lot this situation. So the mother disappears, but not for five hours, mm -hmm. for good. She disappears for good. She disappears for eternity. And in all this uh, period, the child, the child lives alone in the apartment. Uh, some strange things happen uh, uh, at night. Uh, all the windows uh, are open, open themselves by magic in a way. And uh, the snow, the snow, for example, in the winter comes in the in the in the apartment and make heaps of snow uh, inside. Uh, and um, um, sometimes uh, um, the door um, unlocks itself and so on. But the strangest thing is that from the balcony of the, the apartment, there are some uh, bridges over the, the empty space because the apartment is on the fifth floor. There, there are three bridges. The first bridge leads to a, a rubber factory. The second bridge leads to a, a department store. And the third one, leads to the sky and the child climbs those bridges and get in very strange places in the city in bucharest of course uh, it's a fantastic uh, uh, situation i invented those bridges you shouldn't think that they were real uh, so it was like in a in a fairy tale like like in a, like in a, um, i don't know uh, i mentioned anderson uh, and he climbs those bridges and gets in very strange places. In the, fact, in the rubber factory, he finds a huge room uh, full with his father's image made of caoutchouc, made of rubber. Why I, why I imagined my father um, 20 meters long, a huge statue like the pharaohs, uh, like the Egyptian pharaohs, uh, made of rubber and uh, leaning on the floor. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I really don't know. It was an image coming from my subconsciousness. Uh, maybe this is the way I perceived my father all the time, because my father was uh, um, was uh, was working very hard and uh, only came home uh, in the evenings. For so for me, he was gray. He was like like the rubber. He was a, um, in, in, in fact, he was a sort of a um, phantom or something like that in our uh, in our family. Maybe this is why he was a, a huge gray statue. Mm -hmm. But in the other on the other side of the block of apartments, um, there was another bridge which led to this department store. And that, there, in the middle of the department store, on the floor, on the first floor, there was the huge statue, let's say, of uh, my mother, who was made of chocolate. <laughs> she was 20 meters long. She was made of chocolate and, and covered with the stanium. Uh, mm -hmm. Some yeah, OK. Like uh, the rabbits, the Easter rabbits or uh, the Santa Claus. Uh, uh, that we have uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, 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 mm -hmm. in the Christmas. <laughs> uh, so she was covered with this uh, tin foil, and uh, on the tin foil uh, there was a, a drawing uh, similar to resemblance to the resemblance, the real resemblance of my mother. And uh, the boy gets inside her. So it's a, a sort of a very very 
strange memory of the time when I was really inside my mother. So he gets inside this, uh, this chocolate uh, figurine mm -hmm. uh, and he walks a bit uh, in her chest, in her womb, and uh, feels himself like in a church because the, the, the uh, uh, breasts of the mother and the, the, the uh, belly of her were like those uh, coup <laughs> coupons, coupons of a church. And he is fascinated and he is like in a state of dreaming. And uh, uh, it was so funny and so strange for me to uh, create those uh, fantastic, surrealistic images starting from a single memory from my wow. childhood. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Es ist mit Sicherheit kein Wunder, ähm, dass Sie mit Hans Christian Andersen verglichen wurden und dass auch äh, Rezensenten gesagt haben, dass Elemente der Psychoanalyse äh, zu finden sind, speziell in diesem Buch. Äh, ich möchte zu einer anderen Frage kommen, gerade zu dieser Bildhaftigkeit, also zu diesem, dass man richtig hineingezogen wird durch die Bilder. Äh, es ist tatsächlich wie Filmeinstellungen. Ich kann sogar die Schnitte sehen, wenn ich es lese. Ja, schwebende, goldene Kugeln, geheime Türen, ein Denkmal schwebt. Und ich dachte mir beim Lesen, ich weiß nicht, wie Sie dazu stehen, aber vom Medium her könnte das eigentlich äh, ganz gut in einen Film passen oder in eine Graphic Novel oder vielleicht sogar in ein Videospiel. Äh, also das würde sich ganz gut eignen. Wie stehen Sie dazu? Ist das etwas, das es von Ihren Werken auch geben könnte? Uh, well, uh, thinking ab about a movie um, starting from one of my, my books uh, make me uh, dream of getting rich. I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's the only way uh, possible to get, uh, to get rich. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I, I said it as a joke because I don't want to get rich. Uh, I feel very well as I am. Uh, and uh, um, in a way, I'm kind of suspicious to the, um, the idea that uh, one of my books uh, can become a, a, a movie. There are um, also other writers who uh, for, forbade uh, the movie directors to do anything from their uh, mm -hmm. novels. Um, I mean, um, J.D. Salinger, for example, he forbade uh, everyone to make a movie from his, uh, um, I don't know, uh, um, Franny and Zui or, uh, or uh, um, the book about, uh, about Holden Caulfield. Uh, and um, also, uh, I think uh, many, many, uh, writers are not suitable uh, for uh, becoming uh, uh, for for uh, many many novels are not suitable for for becoming uh, movies um, how can you make a, a movie from uh, from proust for example mm -hmm. how can you make a movie from joyce it's almost impossible because the art of writing is not always compatible mm -hmm. to some other arts uh, to music, to uh, movies, and so on. My only uh, adventure in this uh, respect was not uh, uh, with uh, with movies, but with um, with the art of the bande dessinée, um, the comics, comic books, mm -hmm. uh, comic stripes. Uh, there is a, a wonderful uh, book like that. Uh, made by um, maybe the most famous French uh, author of comic books, uh, Edmond Baudouin, uh, who illustrated uh, um, one of my novels, uh, Travesty, which is called Travesty. Uh, and this book uh, is absolutely great. Uh, it's uh, Baudouin's book, not mine. I consider it uh, a great piece of art. Uh, um, and uh, uh, it is uh, translated so far in uh, four languages uh, and uh, can be, uh, can be uh, uh, read and contemplated in a way 
in uh, in uh, in French, uh, in uh, Portuguese, in Brazil, uh, in um, Italian, and in uh, uh, there's another one. Uh, so I'm I'm very happy to to have this book mm -hmm. um, and to have collaborated with such a great uh, a great artist. Herr Katzaisko, vielen herzlichen Dank fürs Erste. Um, ich möchte Sie nun bitten, dass Sie uns ein Stück aus dem Buch auf Rumänisch vorlesen, wie wir es besprochen haben. Vorher möchte ich aber noch die Gelegenheit nutzen, Dorothy Hartinger vorzustellen. Ich habe sie noch nicht so wirklich begrüßt. Dorothy Hartinger ist gebürtiges Deutschland, seit 2002 Ensemblemitglied am Burgtheater in Wien. Und sie tritt auch bei, den, bei Kooperationen auf mit den Wiener Festwochen und den Salzburger Festspielen und vieles mehr, wie wir vorhin schon gehört haben. Ja, genau. Gut. Uh, I, uh, I thank you so much, Veronica. Um, if uh, it would have been possible, I would have spoken to you till uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel that I, we were just starting uh, uh, to talk, but uh, the time is uh, pressing us, uh, so I will... Uh... No, not this one. Oh, sorry, this one, of course. I, I, I cannot uh, read in yeah. German. Uh, I will only read uh, a very small passage from uh, this uh, book uh, and then uh, I will uh, kindly ask Dorothea, a wonderful actress, uh, to, to continue. Se afla la mare înălțime, într-un edificiu de pe crasta unui munte, poate. Cerul era de o frumusețe magică. Așa cum foarte rari se întâmplase să vadă. Galben și azur, galben și azur, nor galbeni, cu partea dinspre pământ vineție, plutind senin pe cerul azuriu, având către orizont o nuanță roz întunecată. Mai multe lune fantomatice, ca niște nebuloase alburii, răsăriseră împreună. De desubt se întindea o vale verde, cât vedeai cu ochii, străbătute de patru râuri sinuase, sclipind roz, translucid, prin mărcile lor. Printre ele, pe fâșii lungi și vălurite de pajiște, se vedeau prefirate sute, mii de morminte de cristal. Thank you. Wir hören ein kurzes Musikstück und dann wird Dorothee Hattie gelesen, bitte.
Als er erwachte, stieg er immer noch den Schacht hinab. Aber tief unten war schon ein Licht zu erkennen, das jenes der elektrischen Glühbirnen übertraf. Durch jenes andere Licht, man hätte es ein Abendlicht nennen können, das einem den Körper durchsichtig macht, stieg der Junge die letzten Stufen hinab, wobei er alle seine Gliedmaßen schmerzhaft einschlafen spürte. Als er den Fuß am tiefsten Punkt der Leiter auf den Boden setzte, sah er sich im Halbdunkel aufgelöst. Vor dem enormen Katapetasma stand, einem Altar nachempfunden, ein in kaffeebraunes Wachstuch eingeschlagener Operationstisch.
Die Statuen waren so hoch, dass ihre Gesichter sich im gelben Abendlicht auflösten. Der Junge reichte ihnen gerade mal knapp über die Knöchel, den Kopf in den Nacken geworfen, um sie sich ganz ansehen zu können, weinte er nun laut, ungebremst, mit heftigen Schluchzern. Er versuchte, ein Leid aus sich herauszuschleudern, das ihm das Herz zerriss. Währenddessen hatten sich die Bankreihen mit den Silhouetten der einstmaligen Dichte gefüllt. Wer weiß, wie sie ihren Grabstätten entkommen waren. Jetzt saßen sie jedenfalls nebeneinander. Als der Lärm aufhörte, warfen alle Grabsteine aus sämtlichen Richtungen das Abendlicht, konzentriert durch hunderte und tausende Spiegel, die Abenddämmerung-Essenz, die Essenz der Essenz der Abenddämmerung ihm auf den Leib. In der purpurnen Feuersbrunst versehrte sich, verzehrte sich der Körper des Jungen in endloser Melancholie. Wir bitten um die Musik.
Vielen, vielen herzlichen Dank. Bevor ich mich bei allen bedanke, darf ich auf keinen Fall vergessen zu erwähnen, hinten finden Sie einen Büchertisch, betreut von Rita Hartlieb aus Wien, die, wo Sie alle Bücher erwerben können, von denen wir gesprochen haben. Ganz, ganz herzliches Dank an die Musik, Franziska Hatz, äh, Hatz Sascha Schischenko und Richie Winkler. Eine tolle Formation. Behalten Sie das bei, bitte. <lacht> vielen herzlichen Dank. Danke auch an Dorothy Hartinger fürs wunderbare Lesen. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. Und vielen herzlichen Dank für ein wunderschönes Gespräch. Danke. Thank mm -hmm. you.